Hello friends, welcome to X Amity and Smithy Notes for Biotechnology. इस मॉड्यूल में हम पढ़ेंगे माइक्रोस्कोपी जिसके अंदर आता है लाइट एंड कंपाउंड माइक्रोस्कोप फेस कंट्रास्ट माइक्रोस्कोप फ्लोरसेंस माइक्रोस्कोप इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोप जो है डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पार्ट सेमेंटम एंड एटॉमिक फोर्स माइक्रोस्कोप और साथ में हम हर माइक्रोस्कोप की एडवांटेजेस डिसएडवांटेजेस और एप्लीकेशंस भी देखेंगे माइक्रोस्कोप इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स दैट इज लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप एंड कंपाउंड लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप now we will have a brief introduction about microscope microscope is an instrument that magnifies objects that is too small and basically cannot be seen with our eyes most photographs are taken by using microscope and these pictures can also be ca- called as micrograph two most common terms used are resolution and magnification resolution is the ability to distinguish between two closely spaced points in a specimen or smallest distance by which two points can be separated and still be distinguished as separate objects the smaller the value the higher the resolving power and better the clarity and magnification is the measure of how much large a microscope causes an object to appear light microscope that means it contains a single glass lens mounted in a meter frame called as magnifying glass the visible light passes through the lens system allowing the user to see the magnificent image the advantage is it can be performed on living cells compound light microscope it has more than one glass lens in combination it has three components condenser lens objective lens and eyepiece lens light source that is focused at specimen by condenser lens light either passes through the specimen or is reflected back from the specimen and the part of microscope that holds all of the components firmly in a position is called stand it is of two types upright and inverted the light source is below the condenser lens in upright microscope and objective is above the specimen and in inverted microscope the light source and condenser lens are above specimen stage and objective lens are beneath it phase contrast microscopy also called as optical contrast it is based on the difference in refractive index of cellular structures light passes through dense part of cell to light denser part and example is cytoplasm it helps in obtaining a clear picture of living or unstained cells it is achieved optically by introducing various elements into the light path of the microscope using lens and filters that change the pattern of light mode is bright field that is achieved with minimum of optical elements reduced by color of specimen itself used most often to collect images from pigmented tissues the next mode is dark field it produces images of brightly illuminated objects and is used for viewing objects in liquid media it is used for viewing unsustained cells growing in tissue culture and is used for testing cell and organelle preparation for lysis the light that passes through thicker parts of the cell is help up relatively to the light that passes through thinner parts of the cytoplasm it has usually three phases named as phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 we will see advantages and disadvantages advantages the capacity to observe living cells and the ability to examine cells in natural state high contrast high resolution images ideal for studying and interpreting thin specimen also being used in bone marrow it also helps in making highly transparent objects more visible I have also made a short diagram which shows destructive interference and positive or constructive interference. Now we will go through the disadvantages. 
ring limits the aperture to some extent. It is not ideal for thick organisms. Thick specimens can appear distorted. Images may vary grey or green. Shade of occurs with larger particles resulting in a steady reduction of contrast moving from center of object towards its edges. And now I have written the working for face contrast microscope. If you don't understand anything then you can ask me. I have written in steps the working for this kind of microscope. For Amity students, it's important that you learn the diagram thoroughly and also write answer in your points and along with advantages and disadvantages. This is the diagram for face contrast microscope which is shown in three parts. First part scattered light that is 90 degree face shifter. Second background light 90 degree face and third background light is dimmed. To summarize it, let's go through it again. Light comes from the light source that is to the annular and then to the condenser. The condenser condenses the light and, and goes through the specimen point. There can be two types, no specimen and specimen. For no specimen, light beam passes the particle wave and the surround wave and for the specimen, specimen has different density and it will diffract light. Next type is fluorescence microscopy. In this type of microscopy, light of short wavelength is absorbed and it gives off light of longer wavelength. It uses fluorescence and phosphorescence instead of or in addition to reflection and absorption to study properties of organic and inorganic substances. Two terms used are fluorescence and phosphorescence. I have given the definition of both of them. And most commonly used technique is epifluorescence that is light microscope where epi means from above, light comes from above the sample and the objective lens acts both as condenser and objective lens. It is popular because of the ability to achieve highly specific labeling of cellular compartments. The images consist of distinct regions of fluorescence. The light source is usually a high pressure mercury or a vapor lamp which emits from the ultraviolet into red wavelengths. A specific wavelength of light is used to excite a fluorescent molecule in this specimen. Light of longer wavelength is then imaged. And this is done by using a combination of filters. There are three filters that are excitation filter, dichromatic filter and barrier filter. I have shown the diagram. The total intensity of fluorescence is directly proportional to the intensity of incident light. And now we will discuss about the principle. It has three major steps. First, the energy is absorbed by the atom which becomes excited. And then the electron jumps to higher energy level. And then the electron drops back to ground state emitting a photon. The atom is fluorescing. The, these three diagrams basically show the principle of fluorescence microscope. Its application, it is used in imaging structural components of small specimens, imaging the genetic material within a cell. Now this is a flow chart. Antibody when added to fluorocone gives fluorocone tag antibody and which when added with unknown bacteria gives if it has one bacteria from which antibody is taken then it will bound. It is also used to see complicated objects or to know orientation of an object. Next type is electron microscope. It has two types scanning and transmission electron microscope. 
electron microscope is used when the greatest resolution is required it reveals the ultra structure of cells it works by using an electron beam instead of visible light and an electron detector instead of our eyes it is used to investigate the detailed structure now we will see the diagram for scanning electron microscope in the next slide you will see the description for scanning electron microscope the beams of electron scans the surface of sample the electron interacts with the material in a way that triggers the emission of secondary electron these secondary electrons are captured by the detector which forms a image the direction of the image emission of the secondary electron depends upon the orientation of the features of the surface the image formed will reflect the characteristic features of the region of surface that was exposed to the electron beam this diagram shows how divergent electron passes through condenser lens and then converges next type is transmission electron microscope here a beam of electron hits a very thin sample the electrons are transmitted through the sample after the sample the electron hits a fluorescent screen that forms an image with the electron that were transmitted it has application for studying the structure of protein molecule and arrangement of protein molecule in cell membrane also i have given key differences between sem and tem this is a very favorite question which comes for six marks to differentiate between two types so you can use these points and draw their diagram as well with their applications another important differentiate is between electron microscope and light microscope if anyone finds any difficulty in learning those workings and principles they can just summarize the entire electron microscope and light microscope through these points and form their own answers and write it along with a diagram and the last type is atomic force microscope in this type it consists of a micro scale cantilever that is a pointed or a sharp tip at its end the, the cantilever is made up of silicon and now the working that is when the tip is brought to the proximity of sample surface force is generated between the tip and the sample which leads to a deflection of cantilever according to hooke's law This is measured using a laser spot reflected from top of cantilever. It has two primary modes of operation that is contact mode and non-contact mode. In contact mode cantilever tracks across the sample surface and uses the deflection of cantilever to measure the contour of surface. To eliminate noise and drift that affects static signal low stiffness cantilevers are used. in non contact mode the tip vibrates slightly above its resonance frequency and does not contact the surface of sample van der waal forces decreases the resonant frequency of cantilever another type of mode is tapping mode which is has two types of mode that is frequency modulation and amplitude modulation frequency shows change in oscillatory frequency with respect to external reference oscillation and amplitude modulation is change in oscillation amplitude yield topographic information of sample this type of microscope can produce images of material as small as 1 nanometer and sem is limited to 100 nanometer also provides a 3d surface profile some of the application where this type of microscope is used are gene therapy antigen antibody binding studies and studying the unfolding of proteins and this is the diagram which shows atomic force microscope i hope you are clear with the topic of microscopy for any doubts or suggestions please comment and let me know and do not forget to like share and subscribe to get the latest updates
थैंक यू